Dies mir jeb a chart de oge agus de gynele. A fravest agus a chart. Is Brian Ryerke a shasavancha? Looking down on mainly a very young audience. I was a guest to clash in Provost and Son, a poem that was written by the first president of Ireland, Dr. Douglas Hyde. I think he wrote it late in life when he was looking back over the time when he was young. I was there to me ask Gael again, for those of you that mightn't have a bit of Irish, I'll translate it. O oat go hoat bovra ma hiu, is the board ma leim ar vor a clay. I lingus a maud bovur ma guil, aus bovio ma chri i lor ma clay. What he was saying really that when he was young, O oat go hoat bovra ma hiu, I had no problem in going from place to place on foot. Is a vod and clay, even at the top of the mountain, he was able to jump very high. Ilingis amad bavur maguil, I was interested in ships and boats, very interested in. And I think the nicest line of all, my heart was alive in my chest. He went on then to speak of hope. And that's the one thing I tell all the young people here tonight. The greatest thing of all that you can have is hope. And one of the last lines in that poem was, again, think of when he was young, the vion sonus Rome, how this a bus, in St. Glown or Togog May. In the glen where I was brought up, there was happiness around every corner if you went to seek it. That's what I'd say to you now, Tasha Vogue. You should look around those corners. You should have the courage to go to them and to find out the happiness that's there for you. And he did add, in some glown or togog may. He was very proud of the glown, the glen where he was raised. And I think every one of you and every one of us, we should be equally proud of the place that we started life. That will be an important place in your lives forever. Now, when I first heard of this program, TAP, I was delighted to see it. It was something new. Trinity Access Program. And that's a wonderful word, access. It lets you in someplace. At a very young age, you're all here in Trinity College, a university that was founded way, way back in 1592. You've got involved through a program, the TAP program. But it only gives you access. And then it's up to you then to avail of it, to become interested in it, to become enthusiastic about it, and to get the benefits from it, which you will if you keep it up. Access is one thing then, but availing of it. Now, I was very lucky in the place I grew up, in that everybody, especially parents, and I'd address that to the parents, the parents were interested in education. And every parent around where I came from, they believed if you get an education, You'll have, you'll have access to many things. It will open a lot of doors for you. And then we were lucky as well that there were plenty of schools there, first and second level. And parents insisted that everyone went to second level. And there was one great example, somebody I never knew. He was dead, I'd say, when I was born. And his name was John Galvin, and he was held up to all of us as an example. It was said in Dingle, whether it was true or not, that he was the first Irish person to get into the British civil service. And that he got that access into the British civil service because he kept going to school. He went as high as what used to be called that time the King's Scholarship. 
and that would be the equivalent of the leaving cert nowadays. And not many people went that high, and I'm talking about over 100 years ago. But he did, and it gave him access. And he became very famous in the British civil service. And people around England, you say, you could be in the British civil service, you could be in the Irish civil service. There's no limit to what you can achieve if you start off with that vital key, the education. So he was held up to all of us as Vishesh in Gahut. Now what I liked about TAP when I saw it, and when I read the vision, and this is what it says, and this applies to all of you now, to ensure that children and adults from less privileged educational and economic backgrounds are supported in gaining third level education. The third level adds on to what you get in the second and you develop from there. And that's the wonderful thing about this program. The province told you about all the people that has been involved and I know this will grow and will spread to other places and the time will come when maybe somebody listening here to me tonight now that will be, be saying that person was in the first TAP program, the early years of TAP. So I'd encourage you to do your level best to be interested, to tell your friends about it, and as I said earlier, to be enthusiastic about it. Now, I've spent a good number of years, I did spend a good number of years teaching, and I love teaching for this reason. I was in the presence of young people, and young people are generally happy. It tends to keep you happy. They're very optimistic, and I like that sort of a setting. And I gave a few, one, a few years in Lawrence or Tool School down in several places. I gave a good number of years in O'Connell schools up the road, both primary and secondary schools. And again, it was fantastic to be with the younger people. And I always encourage people sort of never give in. Never give in. You have access. You'll have to put in your work but will be worth putting in the work. You will have setbacks, but never give up when you have a setback. And I'll give you a good example from sport. Sport trains and teaches people not to give up. And as well as being commentating on matches for a good number of years, the be Michigaminic egg train oil for now, training teams. We always stress sort of never give up. We saw Kilkenny lose in a National League final last Sunday to a great team from Dublin, a great new young team from Dublin, a hurling team from Dublin. I know Dublin have won six All-Irelands in hurling, or is it five, but only one Dublin-born person ever won an All-Ireland hurling medal. Up to now, they had people from other counties, but now they have mostly their own. And I think that's only right, that there should be a good hurling team in Dublin, because the first hurling club ever formed in the GA was formed here in Trinity College, a way, way back. But to come back to the teams not giving in, this Dublin team were often beaten, and I know quite a few of them. Nobody won the next match yet. We'll put in a better effort. We'll get a little bit better. That's the same with you, whatever you're doing, whether it's study or not. You might have a bad day, do a bad exam. That's not the end. There's another exam that nobody has got yet, and you're ready for that. And I'll just give you one example from my knowledge of players. Some of you might have heard of a good meat footballer by the name of Colm O'Rourke. See him a lot now as an analyst on television and so on. I remember being down in Longford in the winter of 1985 at a seminar, and it was a few words that Colm said to me that I never forgot. We were at a seminar, passing a winter's night, talking about this and that, answering questions. When the whole thing was over, we missed us, Colm, we were a gold brain, we were a kind. 
And Cullum said these extraordinary words to me. I'm nearly 30 years of age. Now, he wasn't 30, but I'm nearly 30 years of age. I'm playing for the Mead Senior team since I was 19 years of age. But I have no medal. I have no medal, he said. I won't know All-Ireland. I won't know National League. I didn't even win a local meet championship with my club screen. I have nothing. But the most important words of all came then, but I am not finished yet. You haven't seen the end of me yet. And I wished him the best. And before he was finished, he was Texaco Footballer of the Year. He had two All-Ireland medals. He had two National League medals. He had all stars, and with his club screen, he had won three Meath County Championships. He won everything. And why I often ask myself, because of those words, I am not finished yet. You haven't seen the end of me. It's the same way with you. I haven't seen the end of you. I'll be inquiring from time to time how are they getting on. The crowd that were at the tap all together in Trinity College, 2011. I was begging make this through. So I'd like to encourage you, and I'd like to encourage all the parents and people that have anything to do with those wonderful young people to encourage them. Tashanokal, which is a proverb, it's in Gaelge, Molino Yugostukashi. If you praise young people, they will respond. They like to be praised. They like a bit of recognition. Give it to them, and when things aren't going too well for them, sort of support them. And that's the job of the parents and the teachers. And what I would like to see someday happen as well, in areas like the areas I mentioned there, not economically as strong as others, maybe deprived in places, I'd love to see a program sometime that would set up education for people that missed out and are now advanced in years, to find out what they missed. Because what I said about Dingle, the parents were interested, they wanted the best for the children. I'd love to see that universal throughout the country, that parents would be supporting education to every level. Now, and it will get much better. Nil Muran Ele Lerogum Tarod Ele. I did mention one proverb already, Molen Ogus Tukushi. There's another one I think that you should never forget. It's been put in many ways in different languages, in different dialects all over the country. But my favorite one is, is Gire Kawir Dei Non Doris. Translated again, that means the help of God is nearer to you than the door, and you'd never far away from a door. Ta Doris and Shin, Ta Doris and Shin, wherever you are, and you mightn't be as rooms as big as this, there's a door. But it doesn't mean a door. Wherever you are, a Doris means some place where you can go for help. And it says the help of God is nearer than any door. And the help of God could come through a person. In other words, if you feel you need help, don't ever feel alone. God, nobody's interested in me. I have a problem and nobody, nobody understands it myself. What will I do? Think of that proverb. It's good a cow day in Andorras. Go to the nearest door. It could be the nearest person. And you never know. I always find when you ask people to do something, they respond. Now, Stolen Gwil Magohin Rautagum, it's a wonderful scheme, I think. It deserves to be taken up by other colleges and to see not, I think, the prophet mentioned a figure of 4,000, which is a staggering figure with an involvement. And I believe now there are 300 graduates that started off through this. I hope that will increase. And any time you see me, if you think I can do anything for you, I did teach in O'Connell's. I taught in Lawrence O'Toole's. 
don't be a bit afraid to ask me and to approach me or to ask someone where would I meet him. So congratulations to everybody involved in it, especially the young people and of course their supporters, their parents, and above all, the idea, if you like, it was generated here in Trinity College and they were willing to follow through. And I'll finish with one more proverb. It's one I use a lot. Which means, roughly translated, on this day next year, no matter who wins the All-Irelands or the leagues, may we all be alive and well and looking forward to another happy day. Good a meal, a